Cubs? <laughs> um, we had a pretty good game plan going into the week. Uh, we uh, went over some things. We had a great week of practice, and we were just able to execute. And how much was, I mean, you're an experienced guy, kind of, but not a young guy, but some of the young guys, how much development did they make? Was there something that the veterans did to kind of bring them along and make sure they were up to speed? You know, just keep improving every week. You know, we've been trying to do that, keep getting better and better. You know, Coach, Coach Stud stays on us every day and practice about doing little things right, and it was able to show on Saturday. How much more have you worked on pass blocking in recent weeks than, <coughs> say, run blocking? Well, it's the same, you know, just, but we're just trying to make sure we fix the little details in our pass blocking sets and things like that, but it, that hasn't really changed. Like, we haven't focused on one more than the other. They're both key parts, you know, we, we have run first team and then we set the run up, uh, the pass up with the run, so. Urban said he's been emphasizing pass blocking. Uh -huh. So what, in what ways, if you're still working on it equally, in what ways is the coaching staff emphasizing it? Just they're critiquing us like really hard mm -hmm. on our techniques and things like that and making sure we're doing the right things. Jamarco, what was the offensive line room like the week after the Penn State game? Uh, you know, we kind of dropped the ball a little bit. You know, we had a rough game, and that's not who we are. We protect the quarterback, and we run the ball, and we take pride in that. And so, you know, we had to regroup and get focused and go out and get ready for that game last week and then this one this week, and we were able to do that. I mean, it seems like you guys turned a corner very, very quickly. There wasn't, you know, there weren't any growing pains in that. I guess, how does that happen? You know, it wasn't so much as, it was small things that we were doing wrong that were fixable. And I mean, we still have mistakes, so we still fix like every week. We still see stuff in film that we need to correct. But it wasn't like major things that was wrong. It was just small things, and it all came out at one point, which you don't want that to happen, but it did. And it's kind of a good thing that it happened because it came out early, better early than later in the season. And so we were able to correct those things. Can you give an example of one of those little things? Um, you know, just footwork on pass pro. Footwork is really important. So. That was one of the big things that we... Jamarco, when a game like that happens, I think people just sort of naturally like look at the tackles because you guys are kind of on an island out there. I'm just wondering, it's your first season as a starter. It's the first time you've maybe kind of felt the heat in that way. I'm just wondering what it was like for you to, to go through that personally. Um, you know, it's part of the game. Uh, like you said, playing tackle, you're on an island, and you have to be able to protect that island in a way. But uh, it wasn't. It's, it's just a part of the game. You, you can't. You know, dwell on it. You gotta learn from it and move forward. They any... played games with you guys, though. I mean, they ran some stunts and twists and things like that. And until you go through some of that, uh, do you really? You know what I mean? You have to experience some of those things to get yeah. used to them. You know what I mean, Jamarco? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, like I said, it was a great learning experience. You know, you hate to have it happen with the loss, but uh, it's, it's it was great to learn from. We got, uh, got to watch the film and fix those technique errors, so that was good to learn from. And what was it, in, in what regard? Is it more of a be patient? I mean, or, or be alert? What, what what were the things you really had to, you know, to realign, so to speak? Some of both, you know, seeing stuff early uh, from the defense, and then you know, like I said, like footwork and things like that from a more technical standpoint. You guys, Billy Price is pretty respectfully combative when he talks to us. Um, I, I, it makes me wonder what he's like with you guys? Uh, you know, Bill, Billy is a guy like people go to you know, any problems. Like the first thing I remember from uh, Billy was my first summer we was working out and we do like push-ups at the end of workouts and I couldn't do any more push-ups and Billy crawled underneath me and like did push-ups with me on his back. Like that's my first memory of Billy. That was like my second week here. I'm in there probably about to cry because I can't do any more push-ups and he crawls underneath me and He's doing the push-up. Like, that's just the type of guy he is. He's always there if anybody needs help or, you know, just want to talk or anything. You know, he's a great guy. I love Billy. But what sounds how like does someone react to that? When he did <laughs> how does someone like you no. react to that? I mean, it just shows, like, the brotherhood we have. You know, he didn't know me, really. It was, my, like I said, it was my second week here, and I didn't really know him. But, like, for him to do that, like, to see me struggling and to care and to try to help me out when I was really struggling, that was you know, just a... Uh, it showed me like what type of people were here, you know, and so it was just a great feeling to know that somebody who I didn't really know that well had my back like that. We've been told Billy's the strongest guy on the team. Is there even a close second? No. Who, who, uh, would, Devon, who would be second? Devon probably. 
they find us a strong dude, but yeah, Billy's definitely the strongest. Jamarco, after a game like Saturday night, as an offensive line, how do you guys go back and assess like kind of where things are? You know, you guys got a lot, took a lot of heat, the Penn State game and all that, and then you threw from almost 300 yards and four touchdowns on Saturday. You know, each game you still have things you can correct. Like there's no such thing as a perfect game. And Coach Stud, you know, as soon as we walked in the meeting room uh, yesterday, he was screaming at us about stuff we was messing up. So it's always stuff to fix. There's no such thing as a perfect game. So uh, we're gonna. We looked at the film yesterday. We have some things to correct, and you know, just keep moving forward and get ready to play this game. So this there week. wasn't any positivity from Coach Stud. Oh no, it was. A sack or anything? It, it was definitely posit right. positivity, but. He's like he doesn't want us to rest on what like we accomplished. He wants us to keep improving. So he demands a lot out of us. You go through obviously a, a huge win, and then you everyone's already fast forwarding outside the building to the Michigan game. How do you guys make sure that that does not happen? Like if you guys that you focus on Maryland, then you focus on Michigan State. You know, uh, Coach Meyer does a really good job of making sure we focus on each opponent. You know, and so we can't look past anybody. Like, especially like we've already uh, taken a loss this year, so like that just shows you, you just can't look past anybody. And we're focused on Maryland. We're not really worried about them. When that game comes, that game will come. But we have to take care of what we need to take care of before we get there. Jamarco, you're questions. obviously, you know, you're where you want to be. You, I'm sure you thought when you got here you'd be the left tackle eventually. How long did it take you to get settled in? I mean, and you know you had the Penn State game, but were you feeling pretty good about yourself before that? And, and thought you were getting grips at things or is it still something you're still trying to get a grasp of even now? Um, I, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp. You know, the Penn State game, like I said, it wasn't too much fun. Right. But uh, like I felt last year I was prepared. And so like I prepared every game last year because I never knew if my number would need to be called and it never did. But I felt like I was always ready last year. And so that helped me a lot this year, you know. And it is my first year starting, but like the coaches rely on me because I am kind of an older guy, like, and I know like the playbook and things like that really well, to be able to be on my stuff. Have you been a Cubs fan? Have you been a Cubs fan all of your life? Uh, I was a Sox fan when I was younger. Front runner then, kind of guy? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no ooh, you just want to wreck it, man. man. No. He knows no. I'm joking. Uh, oh, my God. favorite player was Magli Ordonez yes. growing up, and then they traded a bunch of the guys, and I switched over to the Cubs, and I was like nine or ten. And how tough was it in the last week to be a Cubs fan? And here were obviously Urban Myers, a Cleveland Indians <laughs> yeah. fan. Oh yeah. Oh man, my house. Three of my roommates are from Cleveland, and then Sam. <laughs> He was cheering for the Indians too, so I was hearing it when it was down 3-1, and then you know, we started coming back, and they started getting a little bit more quiet, and then I was the one celebrating. <laughs> and then how sweet was it at the end for you? It was great. You know, I stayed up late, probably shouldn't have, but <laughs> I stayed up to make sure I watched the ending of that game. It was just a great feeling, and then seeing like all the people back home who I'm still in touch with, they went to the parade and things like that. It was just looked so much fun. Wish I could have went. Just keep rubbing it into everyone. <laughs> who, who are your roommates? Uh, Kyle Berger and Sam and then two other of uh, people that go here. Okay. Is Sam a bitter Reds fan? He's a Reds fan, but he was cheering for the Indians. It's a shame.